So beginning with Fred Edison. Fred Edison. Um, at my home. Where at? In Kalamazoo. All right, thank you. Kyle? Hello, Kyle Hibbard at my home in Kalamazoo. Tim? Tim Hills, my home in Kalamazoo. Regina? Regina Gorham at my home in Kalamazoo. Lene? Lene, you're muted. Sorry. Lene Powell Wilson at my mother's home in Illinois. Catherine. Ed and White at my home in Kalamazoo. And I'm Joshua Koenig at my home in Delton. Um, okay, approval of agenda. Are there any, any, is there any discussion or any additions, et cetera, to the agenda? I don't have any additions or changes. Pam. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, Sharon. <laughs> we, we talked about uh, an action item on the lost and found report. And you said we should change it at the meeting. The lost and found report has a proposal for me to uh, end my fulfillment duties and transfer them to Lynn Houghton. For those of you who have read it, there's a proposal there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, Sharon said we could add it this evening. Um. Does that work? Yeah, that's that's fine. One more time, where where did you two decide you wanted to add it? Um, I would put it under. Oh wait a minute, we we have a um. Let's put it under old new business. That's fine. Okay. So it'll be item C under old and new business. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Any other additions or amendments? Can I get a motion to approve the uh, approve the agenda as amended? I'll motion to approve as amended. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, so introduction of guests. We have a few tonight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call your first name. And when I do, please uh, state for the record your name and where you're located. Nelson, we'll start with you. Nelson Nave, uh, architect, uh, my office on Edward Street. Pam? Pam O'Connor, <clears throat> excuse me, volunteer calling from my office in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Dan. Oh, Dan, you're muted. There my name go. is Dan Seitzma. I'm the board president of the Kalamazoo Nonprofit Advocacy Coalition, taking ownership of the First Baptist Church. And I'm in my house in Millwood, Kalamazoo. Thank you. Uh, Quentin. Quentin Slovacek, a member of the First Baptist Church and also the uh, board moderator as a guest here in my apartment, Kalamazoo. All right. Um, pastor David. Yes, I'm Dave Nichols, the pastor at First Baptist Church. Um, I've been there for almost six years now. Okay. Uh, George. Um, <clears throat> my name is George Corman, and I've been a member of the First Baptist Church for over 60 years. Uh, and I live in Portage. And Joyce. Joyce, you're, you're muted, Joyce. There, is that there, it? Yep, there okay. we go. Yeah, Joyce Standish, uh, Portage, Michigan, a member of First Baptist Church. Okay, thank you all. Um, Moving to citizen comments on non-agenda items and correspondence. Are there any citizen comments on non-agenda items or correspondence? There are no messages at this time. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, um, now moving to item six, the public hearing. Um, tonight, we are having a formal public hearing of the First Baptist Church Study Committee report. So I am now going to begin the formal hearing for the First Baptist Church's request for designation as a single resource local historic district. Um, so the public hearing is now in session and the chair will call Sharon Ferraro to begin the hearing with an overview of the proposal's background and process. Okay, first I'm going to share screen. And there, I'm getting fairly good at this. Okay. Okay, this is normally what we do with this presentation It's just kind of a quick overview of what the process is and a little bit of a history of the church itself. Um, it's such a rich history. I did not make 42 slides about that, but uh, I do wanna go over what the process is for adding a local historic district. So Kalamazoo has had a very long history of historic preservation over 50 years. We have actually been active in historic preservation as a formal commission longer than the federal government has. So in terms of the Historic Preservation Act of 1966, by a year anyway, um, in 1970 in June, Public Act 169 in, in Michigan was created by the legislature that allows local cities and units of government to set up local historic districts. Local historic districts are much more powerful than the National Register. In 1970, we also had our first Kalamazoo Local Historic District Study Committee and we added our first Red National Register site with Ladies Library in 1970. In 1973, we added our first local historic district, which was what we now consider the South Street Historic District, about two thirds of the existing current district was that very first historic district in Kalamazoo. So a historic district can be a single building like the Kalamazoo House, the, uh, um, I've forgotten the name. Anyway, th this it can be a single building. And the Marlboro, which is right next door, is also a single resource. Buildings that have uh, do not have a tightly shared history can be next to each other and both be single resource historic districts. But it's usually not considered appropriate to pick a single resource out of a collection of equally eligible resources to nominate to be a local historic district. And or so it, it can be a single historic district can be a single building or it can be a collection of buildings like the Haymarket district or the Rose Place or Vine neighborhood or uh, Stewart neighborhood or West Main Hill. All those are a collection of buildings that tell a consistent story about our past here in Kalamazoo. So for an example, here's the Haymarket back in 1900 and today it's there's not really an awful lot of difference from those storefronts. The, the vehicles in the street are different, but the, the buildings are very much the same. So there's a difference <clears throat> between a National Register and a local historic district. The National Register Historic Districts in Kalamazoo has over three dozen of those. Some are districts, collections of buildings, and some of them are individual resources. Um, we have the Bronson Park Historic District, National Register Historic District, which was listed in 1983 as part of a very large multiple resource nomination that included two additional districts, as well as a number of individual properties. The National Register is honorary. By being listed on the National Register, the review of federally funded projects can be impacted by a historic site. So if, for example, they decided they wanted to widen Michigan Avenue by another four lanes and wanted to take down everything on the south side of the street, because the buildings on the south side of West Michigan are listed in the National Register, that would be unlikely to be successful because it would have a negative impact on designated historic resources. The other um, really good thing about the National Register is it allows the use of the 20% historic preservation tax credit. There's no review involved with being National Register listed unless the property owner asks to use the tax credit. So there's no local body that comes and makes decisions about what happens to your property. A local historic district is very, very different. Uh, it uses the same criteria in terms of age and architectural integrity and history of the buildings. 
But it does require that once the historic district is established, that any exterior work must be reviewed by the historic district commission, either administratively through staff or through the commission itself. Generally, 82% of the pro projects are reviewed by staff, usually in two days or less. This year, it's been a little bit longer. And 97 to 100% of the projects that are reviewed are approved. So the vast majority of projects that an owner proposes are approved. Every so often, the commission may deny work, such as inappropriate alterations or demolition. And just uh, as of January 1st, we have the new 25% Michigan Historic Preservation Income Tax Credit back, which being listed on the local as a local historic district makes the property owner eligible to use that tax credit once they're through the rulemaking process. It'll probably be summer before it happens. So these are our historic districts in Kalamazoo. And as you can see, they kind of circle the downtown in a crescent. Um, we've got the Stewart neighborhood, West Main Hill a little further west. To the south is the Vine neighborhood. And then right downtown, we've got the Haymarket Historic District. So uh, Kalamazoo has the most buildings on a local historic district per capita of anybody in the state of Michigan. We have a little over 10% of the city is designated as historic districts. Most other cities uh, average between three and 5%. So Kalamazoo has done a lot to protect our historic resources within the boundaries of the city. And we have the five uh, uh, contiguous historic districts, which are multiple resources. And then we have nine individual single resource historic districts, which will be, uh, hopefully we'll take it up to 10 with, this, with today's work. So this is the process of creating a local historic district. There are essentially 10 steps that are defined by our state enabling legislation, which is Public Act 169. And they are also in our city of Kalamazoo ordinance chapter 16. And it specifies exactly the work that must happen in order to establish a local historic district. We have gone through, we are up to step number eight, where we are having the public hearing to uh, determine whether or not this, you know, for the final determination and the public. There's, like I said, there's several steps. There's a study committee report, which Pam O'Connor did a wonderful job compiling for us. The um, study committee, once the report is done, and the study committee is the Historic Preservation Commission in the city of Kalamazoo. Once the report is done, it needs to be transmitted to the Planning Commission in Kalamazoo, which had uh, which received it and had no comments. Um, it needs to be re received by the State Historic Preservation Office. They had some comments as to content and um, some details, and those have all been remedied in the report you're seeing today. It goes to the Michigan Historical Commission, which gave us no, no comments and the State Historic Preservation Review Board, which gave us no comments that would need us to change anything. So now we're at, that's number seven. So now we're at step number eight. So uh, once the hearing is done today, public comments and comments from the commissioners and from anybody else will be incorporated into the final study committee report. And that will be sent to the city commission sometime in the next year. And we're hoping for sooner rather than later to uh, for the city commission to make a decision about whether to amend the historic district ordinance chapter 16 to include the, the first Baptist church as a new local historic district. That's usually done in two meetings for the city commission. One is considered the first reading and that's, it's not considered a hearing. It's just a matter of the first reading. And then the next meeting usually is when the city commission will have a public hearing, accept public comment, and then decide whether they will um, approve or deny the new local historic district. So that's the process. We're at number eight, we've got two more steps to go. And then once the city commission approves it, then 10 days after that, the owners of the building, the owners of the First Baptist Church will become uh, subject to historic district commission review for exterior alterations on the building. So this is the step we're at right now. Um, and we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. We've gone through the, the, the longest part of it is over. So we do have the historic preservation income tax. I'm just going to touch on that just quickly 
there is a rulemaking process that you have to go through when you establish something like that. It's, it's, some of it's very basic, like what do the forms look like? What information are we asking for? Some of it is making interconnections between the State Preservation Office and the Department of the Treasury, which will actually grant the tax credit. And there are other things that, that enter into that. So it's not going to be as of January 1st, 2021, suddenly you're able to apply for the tax credit. It's gonna take a while for the rulemaking process. Um, I am guessing, and this is a guess on my part, it will probably be sometime in the spring to early summer before we will be able to actually apply for that credit. Um, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of details because I could easily take two hours talking about the tax credits. So are there any questions from the commissioners or anyone about the process of establishing a historic district in Kalamazoo and in Michigan? No. Nope. Okay, we will go on then. So this is a map of the Bronson Park National Register Historic District. We are talking about, in this case, we are talking about only including 315 West Michigan, the First Baptist Church, in a new local historic district. Uh, copies of the study committee report have been emailed to every other property owner in the Bronson Park National Register Historic District so they would be informed about what is happening and what the process is like. So these are the buildings that are included in the Bronson Park National Register Historic District. They are in order of age, as far as we know, some of them, we, we don't know always about exactly when things were built, but um, so these are the 17 properties that are located, that were located in the Bronson Park National Register Historic District. We have, of course, lost 302 Academy and uh, 224 South Park in the last couple of years. So we're down to 15 properties right now. But that's again, that's the National Register District. Mm -hmm. Last spring, late spring, early summer, we got the mm -hmm. Historic Preservation Commission received letters from the First Baptist Church and from the Kalamazoo Nonprofit Advo Advocacy Coalition asking that the Historic Preservation Commission consider making First Baptist Church a single resource local historic district. So these are the letters that received from Pastor Nichols and from Dan Seitzma speaking for the board of KNAC. The First Baptist Church single resource local historic district. Part, this building was part of Church Square. Originally the square where First Congregational and First Baptist are located today was set aside as a square for the use of religious congregations. And that, and that was in part the way that the people who founded Kalamazoo set it up. They wanted Kalamazoo to become the county seat. And so they set aside one for the courthouse and for the courthouse, they set aside a square for the academy, they set aside a square for the jail and they set aside church square. So that's one of the reasons why we have it there. The first building, um, that was built for First Baptist was in 1841. It was the second one to go up on Church Square. This building was constructed, the first version of it, in 1855. There were many repairs that have been done and changes that have been done to the church. If you've got a copy of the report, you can read all the details in there. Um, I figured everybody from the church knows it. Everybody from the commission has read it at least two or three times. So, um, so in 1911 to 1912, there were changes to the steeple, the narthex and the entry, electrical and ventilation was added. This church fortunately, as well as first reformed, dodged the fires that seemed to race through so many churches in downtown Kalamazoo in the 1920s. So, um, and so these are the different events that have happened in time over the, you know, for the church. Every time I sit there at Studio Grill, I look out the window and look at the front of the church. So we are asking, we are, the Historic Preservation Commission is proposing that the First Baptist Church be established as a single resource local historic district subject to Public Act 169 and Chapter 16 of the City of Kalamazoo Code of Ordinance as a local historic district. Um, KNAC, the Kalamazoo Nonprofit Advocacy Coalition, this is a, a quote from their letter, and this is uh, this movement to establish nonprofit use of church property is something that has been used successfully all over the United States by churches 
to repurpose their buildings that are only used in many cases for one or a couple days a week so that they have a constant occupancy and a very uh, active use. Uh, back in 2004, the Historic Preservation Commission did a day-long workshop on sacred spaces and repurposing sacred spaces and to make them more, uh, not, we talked about energy efficiency, but we also talked about exactly what KNAC is doing today. So I, the commission applauds them for this, for this project. So this is the information about um, First Baptist, about how the Preservation Commission came to uh, consider them and this church as a single resource local historic district. And now we uh, would like to hear from some of the church members who are here, anybody who would like to speak, any questions for me or for Josh from uh, the commission itself. Well, and then we'll move on. Yes. Yeah, Sharon, um, go ahead and close the shared screen. Yep. So I, I, will see the, so I can see the panel. And I want to do this in kind of order. Um, I'll open the floor for comments first from property owners and other parties directly involved with the request. So are there, are there any comments from the property owners or others directly involved with the request? Dave? I'll go ahead and uh, say something. Go ahead. I'm the pastor of the church and uh, we're very excited about this uh, possibility. Uh, we have, we believe we've had a very long and uh, wonderful history with the city of Kalamazoo, including things like having the uh, original uh, alarm fire bell uh, and having a clock for the use of the city. and. These, these things, and we've always been a church that's been very concerned about the city. So we're delighted to see this um, be an ongoing thing. And I was involved along with Pastor Nathan Dannison of the Congregational Church in originally um, beginning the Kalamazoo Nonprofit Advocacy Coalition. And so uh, this is not a an outside group that is somehow connecting with us, but it's really yeah. something that has grown um, out of us. I'm a member of the board and have been very actively involved with it from the beginning. So this is something I'm very pleased to see happen. And I think uh, I can speak on behalf of the church to say that we all want to see the, uh, the historic character of the church preserved for many years to come. Thank you. Other comments? Well, this is Joyce Standish, and I would just like to comment on the quality of the work done in the report by Pam O'Connor. It, it was a tremendous undertaking on her part, and, and she did a, a fine job with it. I know there's a lot of material out there that she had to sort through, and um, I was just very pleased with it. We're going to be communi uh, communicating that to our congregation when we get the link. Has that been changed since the link that was published in the letter for this meeting? Where the, where the, where the document is? Yeah. No, and I can send it to you um, directly, Joyce, if you would like it. Well, I can get it by the link. Okay. I've, I've sent yes. it to people um, through start. the link, so yeah. Good. Thank you. Other comments? I'll just share a, a few comments from the perspective of the KNAC that is yeah. uh, going to be taking ownership of the building. And <clears throat> uh, we're very proud to be, we're proud and humbled uh, to be taking ownership of the property uh, because we know the long legacy. And I thought Pam did such a wonderful job of summarizing it in the report and reminding uh, everybody of that legacy of service that the building and its congregation and members have had throughout the years um, within the church, but then also expanding it into the work of Lucinda Stone and some other members of First Baptist that not only had influence through the church, but also elsewhere in the community uh, to the point where uh, Lucinda Stone is, is celebrated, not just by First Baptist, uh, but also by Kalamazoo College, you know, in the legacy that they have. 
So there's, there's an overwhelming history to it that we are very proud of and respectful of. Uh, my darker side loves that Charles Guteau uh, <laughs> preached there at one point uh, and then <laughs> murdered a president. Yeah. Horrible. Um, we didn't know about interesting. that. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know you hid that. I used to be a member of First Baptist and they didn't, that was never in the bulletin. Yeah. Um, but there's so many interesting things about uh, the structure. And I was reminded, uh, I got a email from uh, the former pastor of First Baptist Church, uh, Peter Cuey at Pantaleone. And he reminded me that First Baptist in the 90s was already working towards becoming a home for the arts and uh, a real community asset for the arts. And that's why they invested in a enormous and beautiful and high quality pipe organ and also redid the, the chancel of the church to accommodate large music productions in the sanctuary. And so uh, the KNAC is not necessarily inventing something new. It really is continuing something that First Baptist started, and we're uh, taking it on as a nonprofit organization of its own, simply because it's a large undertaking. It's a big project, and it will allow First Baptist to continue worshiping there and doing what they do best, which is church, and allowing the KNAC to do what it does best, which is develop uh, this historic uh, property uh, to the, the grand and quality uh, aesthetics and structural integrity uh, that it's had. And uh, we're very happy to do it with the help of people like uh, Nelson Nave, who is uh, in this meeting, uh, Matt Hollander, who is an uh, incredible developer. Jack Abadi is also on our board, part of uh, Miller Davis. So we have, we've assembled a lot of very quality individuals to help with this. And we've already raised $130,000 for initial repairs and uh, some other stabilizing effects. It's going to have one of the highest or most latest technologies of uh, internet um, is being installed as we speak uh, in this grand historic building you know, this great new technology to help us uh, make it more sustainable. So uh, very happy and very pleased that it will be protected for generations to come. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments before we move to public comments? Yeah, Quentin. Just proud to be a part of this whole process as a newer member of the church, you know, being able to kind of get in on the ground level of this and really help bring it forward and connect the legacy of the church to preserve it on for generations past myself. So it's a, it's a warm feeling as a history buff myself and as a church member. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll now call for any public comments. Um, let's start with Mr. Moderator. Are there any public comments at this time? There is one public comment that came in on the lines. Hold on for just a moment for me. Hello. My husband, Bill, and I are calling in support of historic designation for the First Baptist Church building. Bill is a native of Kalamazoo. The Baptist Church has been a part of his 80-year local history and his downtown boyhood. He owes his 1959 college degree to the Baptists who founded Kalamazoo College. Now, as senior adults, we value and support the survival of the architectural and aesthetic character of the Baptist Church building. It was under construction from 1853 to 1855 and is the oldest house of worship in Kalamazoo. On a personal note, 
I grew up in Charlevoix, where the Belvedere Club has been a significant landmark summer resort since 1878. Long before I became a downtown Kalamazoo resident, I knew that the Belvedere Club had been founded by Kalamazoo Baptists. The influence of the people who formed and built First Baptist Church extended well beyond our Kalamazoo city limits. Bill and I applaud the effort that First Baptist's congregation and the Kalamazoo Nonprofit Advocacy Coalition are investing in being a saving grace for a building that has long been and can now continue to be a community asset. We believe that historic local historic designation will support and strengthen their cause. And we urge City Commission confirmation. Thank you. Carrie Venema, 471 West South Street, Kalamazoo, 49007. Thank you. Other public comments? And that is it at this time. Okay. Pam or Nelson? No? Nelson, go ahead. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Pam for her work on the uh, report. It was uh, terrific, as usual. Um, I have a big background in, in historic architectural work and I hope to uh, continue that uh, being on the board of uh, KNAC uh, at the First Baptist Church. Uh, and we hope to start soon by fixing up um, some of the exterior uh, with a possible grant from the uh, city for facade work. But uh, thank you very much for your work and uh, I applaud this uh, action. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Any other public comment? Okay, I'm going to close the floor for public comments and open the table for discussion amongst the commissioners. Um, and I would just like to first say thank you to Pam for her work on this project. It was an excellent study. Um, and I think this is a fantastic example of adaptive use. And I, I think it's a great project, but I'll open the table now for uh, discussion amongst the commissioners. So is there any discussion, question, comments from the commission? No. I was typing, sorry. I'm trying to make <laughs> sure we have notes. <laughs> I know we'll get some eventually, but I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. some for Sharon. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know we've all thanked Pam, but I don't know that we can thank Pam enough. So thank you, Pam, again. Um, it's, and as, as you said, Josh, uh, and as Sharon said too, I always look at that building when I'm downtown. It's not far from work. I work at the museum. And uh, I'm so happy that it's going to have a life, not that it didn't have a life before, uh, but that its life is going to continue in a way that will um, really bolster the the importance of historic preservation in the downtown and in, in the city of Kalamazoo. So I'm really excited. Any other comments? Okay, um, I'm going to close discussion and call for a motion to approve the request to designate the First Baptist Church as a single resource local historic district. Is that a motion? I'm calling for He's calling for the motion. Oh. So somebody has to make the motion. I can't oh. make I can't make a no. motion. Gotcha. I, I'll motion to uh, approve the request to make the First Baptist Church a 
single resource historic. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. I'm now going to call for a roll call vote. Fred? Yes. Kyle? Yes. Tim? Yes. Regina? Yes. Lene? Yes. Catherine? Uh, yes. And I vote yes. Um, so the motion passes unanimously. Um, yes. So the request has passed this commission. Um, at this point in time, as Sharon said, the next step is going to be review from the city commission. Um, no guarantees. I mean, don't, I was going to say, don't quote me on this, but it's being recorded. So whatever. Um, it'll probably take place in March or April. Um, but again, that's, that's the best guess, but that's the next step at this point in time. Um, so um, again, one more time, I want to thank Pam and I want to thank Pastor Dave and I want to thank Dan and everybody for coming to join us today and all the work that you've put forward um, for this for this project. Um, it's very well done. So thank you all. And you're welcome to hang out for the meeting or you don't have to. I mean, it's up to you. It's up to y'all. But at this point in time, the the formal public hearing is now complete. So nicely done. Yeah, yeah. And for those of you that uh, commissioners that that was the first one, that's how it goes in a perfect world. <laughs> 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 They're not always perfect. Um, okay, moving on now to the financial reports. And I'm going to, at this point, hand this over to Sharon. Okay, what did I, what did I say? Okay. Um, I got some data from Marcy, not everything, because I just was overwhelmed with other things going on. Our um, funds have been transferred from the Historic Preservation Fund at the city in the city funds to the O'Connor Fund for Historic Preservation at the Kalamazoo Community Foundation. We transferred a little over $18,000, I think. So that still leaves us with money in the account, I don't have a specific precise number of exactly how much is left in the account, but that will be on next month's agenda and as part of the report. Um, the, um, if you want to, Marcy did prepare a budget for us for the up for 2021. She pretty much copied and pasted what we had for 2020. I was gonna say this looks almost identical to, I mean, numbers are a little bit different, but this looks almost identical to the 2020, excuse yeah. me, the, the previous budget that yeah. we did approve. And and I spoke with Rebecca and we, Rebecca Kick, and we are kind of online to do the next year's budget, but yeah, so anyway. Yeah, and, and the simplicity of this budget gives us a lot of flexibility in how we actually move things around. If we had a very precise, specific budget that said, you know, we're going to spend $532.80 on this, then that would not leave us the sort of flexibility that we might need as the year moves on to uh, adapt to a, a need that we hadn't anticipated. So um, it's very simple. Um, I, I think we should probably officially approve it. We, we have to, um, yes. per, per the city's guidelines, we have to approve it. So I'm going to call for a motion to approve the budget for right now that is currently in front of us. I'll move to approve the current budget. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Wait, I have a question. Oh, wait, actually we have to do roll call vote. So go ahead, Pam. I have a, actually a couple questions. Yeah. Number one, I have no idea what this means. <laughs> we have three 2020 columns and a 2021 proposed, but I don't know what 2020 budget, year to date, and what particularly what the projection column means. So the projection column as so this is going off of the last budget that was approved right 
the projection is money to date at the end with projected spending based off of the previous year's spending. We haven't spent anything though. So it's just, it's just what projected workable income will be. Is That's, this, it, you know, based off of the last budget. So if I remember from a couple of meetings ago, Lene was going to start acting as our treasurer. Has she had an opportunity to go through this and understand it so that she could make a recommendation for approval or not? Because there's another thing I don't understand and that's the fund name, private purpose trust and donations. I have no idea what that means. And I think that's why we talked about getting a treasurer in place so that that person could understand that and help us understand it because, because we haven't been able to see Marcy at a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, just mean, thoughts and comments. <laughs> I don't know, when I, when I read that, it looks like it's the fund designation from the city's budget. Mm -hmm. So I don't- right, but, but I don't understand the private purpose trust part that's you know those are the things that that you all and i certainly would if i were still a commissioner want to know what that means <laughs> well if it's reassuring at all these are the same categories we've had for at least the past four years mm -hmm. and no one has understood our budget for the last four years <laughs> and I mean, maybe maybe now that we have less actual cash on hand we may need to understand what the limits might be with dispersing that in a more precise way than we had to before when we had an $18,000 pad. So I, I do not understand these otherwise. Otherwise I would be very happy to explain this to you, but I do not understand it either. Well, we can, we can table it for now and sure. stay in contact with Marcy. And come what, back to what, is, what is the drop dead date for us to have it approved? To um, last December. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, I mean, honestly, my thing is, if we're already behind, no fault to us or them. Um, well, no certainly fault can't we wait at least another month until I can get a hold of somebody to ask some questions? Absolutely. That too. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, because um, uh, because of the fact that we are self-funded. And it, this is not anything that really touches on, except for the fact that they hold the money for us, that touches on the yeah. city budget as a whole. Um, I wouldn't say we're free agents, but we're kind of in a unique situation. There are no other boards or commissions in the city that raise their own money like this and spend it. So yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, Lene, we have time for that. And so we can just hold off until next month and I can add it to the agenda for next month. All right, and, and, and so can somebody get me a, a information about Marcy so I can see if I can get a meeting with her? Or I will send an email tomorrow that'll go to both you and her, and um, hopefully we'll be and that explains that we would like to get uh, an appointment set up for maybe the three of us to do a Zoom call and talk together, because I would benefit from. I mean, she's explained it to me a couple of times, and I just, I mean, to her. It's, to me, it's like she's speaking Japanese. And for me, it's like, oh, look at all the pretty shapes. You know, I just, I just don't, I just don't understand money on the profound and talented way that she does. So, um, but I will add that and I'll send an email and then hopefully we can get something set up before the next meeting. And then we can have a, a very lively discussion next month. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anything else with the financial report? Nothing else from me, no. All right. Action items oh. in discussion. The survey. Sharon. The survey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is this is it's ongoing. Um I did send out uh we want to get it relaunched. We want to get people out in the field, but <laughs> The, the timing of sending out a new email to people saying, would you love to get out in the field right now and sign up again as the snow was falling? Right. Probably wasn't the best timing in the world. Um, I got some responses from people, but just a few. 
And so what, what I've decided to do is that I'm going to send out another invitation right around the end of the month to get people to sign up for assignments, shorten the email, and then make it really clear that you do not have to do it right away. You have until the middle of May to do yeah. this. So when the weather gets good, go on out and do your assignment and then come back and ask for another one. So that's uh, what we're going to do. But um, we were funded. Well, we know, you know, we're funded for the, for the grant for the Edison neighborhood survey. We've chosen Kramer design group and um, out of Detroit. And I am meeting with them tomorrow to start working out some of the plans uh, to kind of coordinate our efforts so that we don't duplicate efforts. And, uh, you know, because they want to use the same survey app tool, survey one, two, three, that we're using for our survey to do theirs. So um, we just need to, got a lot of technical things and other stuff to work out. We need to do a public meeting, whether that's going to be, probably it's going to be virtual, probably in late March or, or April, um, and then they can get started on things. So the paperwork is signed, the contracts are signed, and we're ready to move forward on this. The, their survey should be done by early fall. So we should have a, a report out, uh, um, you know, sometime probably in late September is, is when, uh, when it's scheduled on, on the um, agreement we have for the grant. So we're getting there. Any of you guys want to sign up for an assignment once it's a little warmer and maybe a little bit less white all over? Um, that would be great. I'd be happy to come out with you and show you how it works. It's not hard and uh, just get things, get things moving again. Any questions? Just yeah. a request for help from you guys, possibly. Our, our Sarah board wants to put in our next newsletter what the survey is. I've seen on the outline and that they'd like to put out so the residents know what will this survey do. What, and, uh, kind of like what can they expect to see? Yes. People on yeah. the street with the backpacks on. Um, how they can be involved if they want to. So just like taking like three or four paragraphs, you think? That'd be awesome. Uh, it doesn't have to even be that much. I think they try to keep it limited in the newsletter, but okay, okay. it I'll, can be I'll, done. Yep, yep. So yes, I'll be happy to. I can do that. I've got something written. I just would need to, um, I just want to uh, uh, make it specific to Stuart because you have actually one of the smaller neighborhoods. Okay. So, and one street's already done. We already did Woodward. So, um, you know, you could probably do uh, with two volunteers. I could probably do the whole name, the whole, the whole historic district in um, two days. So, okay, great. Could you send that to me and I'll send it on to the board? I will, I will send it to you, Fred. Ha happy to do it. Well, appreciate that. I thought I was going to have to paraphrase it. I was afraid I was going to butcher it up. I'll send it to you. And if you decide it's not clear, just let me know. Because sometimes I know, as with all of us, I'm sure we're all experienced in our own field very, very deeply. And sometimes it's hard to read your own things, your own writing about stuff that's important to you. And other people look at it and go, what are you talking about? I don't understand your terminology or your context. So yeah, so I would, I very much would like you to read it and tell me, does this make sense to you as someone who's not a trained degreed preservationist? So okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, the reservation public education, Regina, any updates? The only change is I figured out where the original external hard drives of the video are. They're in John Shaganabi's office mm -hmm. and they're working remotely. So <laughs> we will get them at some point, but I finally figured out who has them. Hooray! Hey. <laughs> that's, that's a big step, though. Actually, actually knowing where the data is is kind of big right now. So, uh, yeah, you'd think it would have been easier, but so yeah. he's got it. That is <laughs> that was that was kind of the last hurdle, just figuring that out. I feel like getting it to Keith at KPL is going to be the easy part. So, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, Pam and Sharon, oh how. Take it away, Pam. It, it's pretty straightforward. Um, everything's kind of rolling along at this point. Um, Sharon and Lene had to um, cancel their taping appointment with Public Media Network the week before last because Sharon wasn't feeling well. Turns out she wasn't 
she's with us. So we didn't, we didn't lose her, but she bounced back. I don't know if they have anything rescheduled yet. Not yet. Not okay. yet. Yeah. I'm waiting. Lene's says her February is filled up. So, um, you know, she's, so we'll see. I mean, I was, I was just thinking, Lene, that this might be something portable. I may just contact them and see whether I could just bring the material down to the studio rather than them come here if they're comfortable with that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I can do my portion at the studio if, if yeah. that's what you want to do. We can do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll loop you in on the emails and then we'll try to pick a date um, and, and do it, you know, well, we still have to aim for late afternoon. So I need a couple of dates from you about when might work for you in the late afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I did send you an email, but anyway, I sent you an email. Mm -hmm. Well, something happened with my email because somewhere the search feature is gone for my emails. So I can't just search for things anymore. I have to go through at least by name or something. And um, so I will find it <laughs> or you okay. can just send yeah, it to I me. Yeah, I responded to you and I resent it to you a couple of days ago. But okay. um, yeah, that's fine. We can do it at the at the facility, you know, or, <clears throat> you know, you can if we're going to do it at the um, public media, then. I could just set up a time just to do my my portion. Yeah. You know, just whenever yeah. they're able. Yep. Let me so let's let's I'll get that conversation started with them okay. tomorrow and then we'll just see where it goes. But I think okay. we're planning on releasing it till like closer to preservation month, you know, like into May, you know, yeah. in April or something. So it's not like we have to do this quick, quick, quick. We've got a release date coming up on March fifteenth or something. So Okay. We've got a and Pam gave me a script, so I'll be rehearsing my one oh. line. <laughs> Just as a comment, everything else except for the very last thing on the on the uh, report is as it was. The request for funding has been fulfilled. And just for the record, Sharon and Lene, I think you guys are bet are great as a team. So if you can do this one as a team, <laughs> wherever you end up doing it, I think that would be better. That's okay. all. I'm just thinking of warmth, you know, um, rather yeah. than in my basement where it's cool and, or in my garage where it's even more cool. <laughs> so. Okay. I'll, we'll see what the guys are up for. All right. Thank you. Um, traditional trades program. I doubt there's an update, but Sharon, you got an update. I don't have anything. Well, I don't have anything, but the, um, uh, we had a meeting of our task force again today, the National Trust Task Force. Yeah. And this is this is like we've got this, you know, a truck full of vegetables. OK, and now we have to figure out which ones are still good, which ones we need to pay attention to. And we're just trying to, you know, get it weeded down to our, our report as part of this larger report on topics from the National Trust is only supposed to be about four to five pages. So we're trying to distill it all down to not necessarily prescribe solutions, but to, you know, uh, sharpen the focus a little bit so that we can move forward. The Advisory Council on Historic Preservation has also got a task force going. And the Maryland um, Historic Trust has also got a really good task force going that um, some of the, the names on it make me very hopeful that we might actually get something out of this. And we're beginning to identify the problems both from above and below. The problem from above is that, um, the, the larger problem is that there are no curriculums that are open source that can be used for historic preservation trades training. And if you could get a community college or a college and you could say, okay, there's these, you know, these 16 classes, you know, et cetera, this is the whole curriculum and this is available for you to make use of and to see which parts, if any, fit into you. Uh, the, the message I've been getting from KVCC is if that existed, they would, they would jump on it in a heartbeat. And here in Michigan, I think we've got something very important going. I don't know how many of you saw last week that the governor announced the free community free college community degrees college. for anybody over the age of 25 that doesn't yet have a degree. Yep. This could be oh, that's this huge. Could exactly what we're hoping for. This could be really great. So um, I don't have any new reports. I just have some very, um, very positive looking, you know, things that are looking forward as being very positive towards getting some kind of uh, greater supply of preservation trades trained people out in the workplace so that we don't have a historic district commission saying you have to fix your windows 
and someone in, you know, uh, Alpena saying, but there's nobody in my area that knows how to do that. You know, so it's just, that's kind of in, in a nutshell. So I'm very um, optimistic, but I also understand working with this really great crew of people that it's going to be a long haul and there are not going to be any easy solutions, barring winning a mega millions lottery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. okay. Um, okay, uh, the cemetery project. There uh, are grants awarded. <laughs> we did. We got a very nice grant awarded from the Gilmore Foundation. I do not know yet when work is going to be starting on that, but we are going to be um, doing the basic, very, very desperately needed infrastructure things for both cemeteries, both for Mountain Home and for the Jewish Cemetery. Yeah. And uh, uh, we're not going to get to the buildings yet, but we're at least going to get to the infrastructure that really needs to be taken care of. So I think this might be very attractive for the Grave Issue Squad in getting people to be involved once the new roads are in, once the new drainage is in place, once there's clearly work been happening on it, we might be able to get um, more volunteers working with us to do our project, which is the inventory and the cleaning, the gravestone cleaning. So it's a, it's a step in the right direction, a $7,000 step in the right direction that we're very grateful for. Mm -hmm. Pam. Sharon, is the work going to be carried out according to the Secretary of Interior standards? Um, most of it is underground. The, the biggest part of work that might actually have an impact on a historic structure will be repairing the walls in the Jewish cemetery, and those will be just repaired to match what's there. They're not going to replace them. They're just going to fix them from my understanding of the specs. So I can't say an absolute yes, because I haven't seen the specifications yet, but I did see the grant and it pretty much called for repair rather than replace. And will it be addressing the um, vault? No, no, none at neither of the buildings, but it will be addressing the fact that the roads are sinking because the drainage vaults have failed and are literally filled with broken bricks and soil and leaves to the level where they are not draining properly anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're, this is infrastructure. We'll get to the buildings. I'm hoping we'll be able to get to the buildings as phase two. So yes, it will be done to the standards because that's what, that's what the Jewish cemetery wanted was they just wanted repair. They did not want to have it replaced and modernized or anything. They just wanted to fix what's there. Okay. Preservation month. Regina. Sharon and I met uh, and, and talked it over a little bit and Sharon has reached out. Uh, so we, we have two options. Uh, like you saw in there, the date is set. She got us set with the very coveted Zoom spots with the city. So mm -hmm. we have one. Uh, so that's very exciting. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, Sharon also reached out and we've been in an email link with Dan uh, about uh, Dan Seitzma and um, Pastor Nichols about possibly if, you know, pandemic dependent and of course their uh, opinions dependent on possibly having a portion of it at First Baptist, even if it's for like the presenters backdrop to have it set in a historic building kind of along the lines like we would normally do. Uh, but if that's not possible, we'll do full virtual and, and that's fine. Um, so we're trying to cover a few bases. Uh, and uh, I think it's in, it might be in the notes or we've talked about it before, but we'll do, um, we'll basically award 2020 awards using last year's uh, you know, submissions and then award 2021 awards also at the same time. So, mm -hmm. um, in the packet, which thank you to Sharon, uh, I always find it very helpful to see the list of past nominated um, projects. Uh, it's helpful just to think about past projects and then also not nominate something that's already been nominated. Uh, and all, all the information is in there for nominating something. I know Sharon has some things in mind uh, that, that she would like to nominate. Um, my one question was if it would make sense if we want to review everything at once or if we want to split them out into 2020, looking at them at one meeting and 2021 at a different meeting uh, when, when the submissions 
because uh, technically we could look at 2020 now. Uh, we don't, yeah. you know, we don't have to wait. Yeah. Those are already done. And then we would just have to wait for 2021 uh, to be done. Um, and we could look at those. Oh, well, earliest would be the April meeting for 2021. But, um, but I, I didn't know if we wanted to split them, if that made more sense for people so that we're not like flipping back and forth. And um, good. I actually think it does. Okay. That's a good idea. We could do 2020 in, in the March meeting. I yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know what else is going on in the March meeting, but I thought if we wanted to split them, then we could get started on those. Yeah, uh, we'll, and have I, a, we'll have a few things, but I think absolutely that we can do the 2021s okay. in the March meeting, though. Also, it'll help me know who were the ones from <laughs> right. right. Yeah, so we, again, with the don't nominate the ones that were nominated last year. <laughs> right. right, the, um, uh, what we've, I, and that was one of the reasons I was really glad to get back in my office on Monday and unpack it was because when when we put everything off, I never got around to scanning the nominations that came in on paper. So I had to find them again, <laughs> which I have found at least two of them. And I think we had three altogether. So, yeah, they will definitely be on the agenda for next month. You'll get packets with photographs and the nomination forms and everything else as part of your packet for next month. And then we can just make it an agenda item. I think that's a great yeah. idea. And then we can have the April meeting. We can do the um, 2021, the 2021. Yeah. And then that'll be plenty of time for photography and notifications and media releases and that's everything. That's kind of what yeah. I was thinking. Well, give I it as much lead time as we can. Yes. I don't appreciate it. However, can we get those four at least addresses soon within the next couple of weeks because oh, yeah. I don't know who I'm looking for. You know, I might, again, I might be looking at the same thing. Right, right. Um, I can tell you we're looking at the um, uh, Plaza Corp nominated the work that they did on the Illinois Envelope Building, which is the new County Health Department building, the new old County Health Department building. They nominated the Alcott? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, they did that one. And then uh, Sue Robinson nominated a small building on down by Poor Richard's restaurant on Mill Street that is being used as a gym now. Now she nominated it last February. I'm not sure because of the um, the limit on gyms, whether they're still in business <laughs> yeah. and whether they're still yeah. using the building actively. So I want to make a ride by there and maybe talk to them before, you know, and see what the status is, because if they've, you know, given up and given up their lease and they're not there anymore, you know, it might not make as much sense. And I honestly do not remember what the other two are. I have to do some more looking and remind myself. Well, because I know that I had mentioned the one on uh, Crane, the Crane house. Is that one? That is not one. Nope, that is not one. All right. So, and the yeah. Linnea, I know in the packet now, not the ones from last year, but the full list is in there too. So, ones that have been awarded, ones that have been nominated, right. like I throughout. Saw, I saw those, and that's oh, why good. I'm looking okay. on the list. But the 2020 wasn't in the list, and right. I remember we talked about them, but I don't remember who they were. Um, right. because I think I, I had nominated that house last year. But I didn't fill out a form or anything, so I'll get it done this year. Yeah, you could absolutely do it. I mean, it can be a project that's up to five years old. Yep. So that it does not have to be something that was just completed. I've got one project that I really, really, really want to nominate, but they're not going to be done by the deadline. So the porch is not going to be done by then. So I'll just wait till next mm -hmm. year. So um, I do have the forms there. If anybody sees anything that you think really needs to change, this is the same forms we've been using all along. There's no real difference. But, um, and if you can think of people that you might like to nominate as well, people yeah. or organizations, um, that would be a wonderful, you know, that's, that's good as well. It's nice to recognize the buildings, but I think it's also really great to recognize the organizations and the people that have been part of preservation in Kalamazoo as well. So. Yep. So the deadline is March 29th. Be sure to get your nominations in soon, everyone. And these will go out. I have a regular email list I send them to if anybody wants. And then they're going to put it on the city website as well and make that available that way. Because I would, I would really like to see a lot of nominations. People have been doing some great work. And um, 
we've got some big projects and some small projects. And I would just like to see, you know, a lot of choice for us to have for this year. Oh, I know uh, what I want to ask. So is it just the outside structure or does the inside also have to be completed as well? It, it, it entirely. Um, the, it, it, it's, it's, it can be both. It can be just an interior restoration. Mm -hmm. That's fine. It can be interior and exterior. It can just be a small part of a project. It could be just like a porch that was restored. Um, it can be an exterior restoration. It can be pretty much anything. It can be, we gave an, uh, uh, we gave an award to ladies library just for taking really good care of their building for almost 150 years. And that's just straight out preservation. Yeah. So, you know, really we, and I think um, the Lutheran church up above South junior high, we also noted that one as one that had been very well preserved by the, by the congregation over the years. So it just turned out, you know, so it doesn't have to be a recent project. that was a lot of bricks and mortar and expense. It can be just really good preservation. Yep. Well, and we have a new category for interior. We do, but right. that, and that's the so, only one where we need actual access to the interior. Right. Um, the rest of the time, all the judgment is made from the outside of the building. Mm -hmm. Pam, go ahead. Um, just a quick comment. The Michigan Historic Preservation Network also is has just opened its nominations. Mm -hmm. And so if you have an idea for a good project that might fly locally, it might also fly statewide. Right. And I think, I thought if anybody wants a link, it can be, you can find it right on the homepage for the Michigan Historic Preservation Network. And for the first time this year, they're, they're allowing nominations online. I know that because I'm one of the jurists for the awards and I got the message yesterday. So we'll see how it works. We'll keep you posted. Um, Pam, I thought, I, thought the oh. I thought the deadline was today. The deadline? Yeah. Or is it just yeah. opening today? Oh my God, it might be. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I thought the... Yeah, I'm so sorry. Dead. I'm so sorry. Yes. You're right. Too late. <laughs> too many too many things on the list. But I'll I will let you know how the the online applications go. Okay. Regina, anything else? No, I was just looking through my emails to see and the meeting where these would have shown up was the meeting that got canceled because we were not a uh, an essential board. Oh yeah, so that's, that's right. That's that right. We, it right at that time. So it we've never had an electronic version of the ones from last year because <laughs> I saved some things. So. That explains but why I couldn't there. find it. Yeah. Yep, it's not there. It doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Um, thank you. Uh, designation and sites. Pam, good job. You're muted. Unmuting. There we go. Um, were you expecting me to say something at this point? No, I just wanted to say good job. Oh, thank you, Hi. Josh and everyone else. It was a project that was near and dear to my heart. Um, I am sending a message to the, the First Baptist team, a couple of members of which who are still with us this evening, later this evening, reminding them that if they intend to apply for Michigan tax credits, that the rules probably are not going to be ready until late summer or fall, I learned a couple of days ago, yeah, and that they need to photograph the living daylights out of the inside and the outside of the building so that the folks in Lansing have an opportunity to compare what is there now to what you hope will happen under the rehab plan eventually. And I'll share that with Dan as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a real treat. I really, really appreciated having all of the feedback from uh, especially the longtime church members about the early drafts. It was very, very helpful and a really great fun project to work on, which I hope will be an example for some of the other owners of sacred place buildings in the Bronson Park District. And elsewhere. And elsewhere. Mm -hmm. but particularly in the Branson Park District right now. <laughs> um, sustainability, the, we're holding the book projects until at least May. 
Sharon, do you have anything else for that? No, no we were going to discuss it in depth at our um, at the work, work plan planning session on the 24th. Yep. Okay. So, yep. Um, yeah, so that leads into operations. Um, segueing off of what Sharon just said, do remember that we have our work planning meeting on the 24th, which I know we'll get back to with old and new business as well. Um, the grants program uh, subcommittee has a meeting coming up next week, so we'll have an update for you next month about that. Also at next month's meeting, um, some of you may have heard right at the very beginning, if you got into the meeting a little bit early, there's been a request from the city to permanently change our meeting time to Wednesdays from now on. So we're gonna think about that between tonight and next month's meeting, we'll put that on the agenda. Um, I had in my notes that we'll get Marcy in touch with Lene and Lene in touch with Marcy, but we've already talked about that as well. Um, also, Pam has been working on a new kind of report for City Hall as we've talked about. Initially, that was requested to be put on tonight's agenda though we weren't sure about how much time we would have and also didn't want to confuse two possible studies with one. So we're gonna talk about that next month as well. So Pam, I didn't forget about that, um, but it just made more sense to put that on, on next month. So we'll begin talking about that also. And then I know that over the past couple of weeks, there have been some ideas of continuing to talk about the um, you know the historic inclusion ideas and programs that we've been talking about, um, and I wanted to bring up because I know there was some back and forth. You know, should we talk to this person? Well, let's talk to this person first, etc. Um, do we want to see if Dorla is willing to come to next month's meeting and we can get the ball rolling on all of that? Is that something that you would all like? Yes, no, yes. I would be happy to invite her. Yeah, I think that would be a really good idea to just kind of, you know, get our ideas out into the open with the city, see where the city is at, and then begin moving forward and reaching out to some of these other people with ideas, seeing how the Preservation Commission can fit into existing work and existing kind of ideas that are there. And I, th I think it would be a really good idea if we if we spoke with her. If Again, if that's something that people people would like. So... If there are no objections to it, I think we should see if she, if Dorla would be willing to join us next month as well. Any objections to that? No, everybody's good. Okay. Um, I think that's everything that I have for operations then, unless there are any questions. Okay, moving on to old new business. Um, again, as I just said, our meeting to do changes to the work plan. We're gonna have a virtual meeting uh, for Wednesday, February 24th at 6 p.m. So not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. And um, as Sharon said in an email, this will be a public meeting as well. So it's gonna be an informal meeting. You know, we're just gonna be talking about the, the work plan. Um, you know, so we'll go through it for those of you who have done work plans before. I mean, it'll be the same type of work plan meeting as we've always had in the past, but it will be broadcast and open to the public. So, I, I mean, I will at some point in time take a moment for any public comments, but um, yeah, just so, just so people are aware. Um, Pam, did you have your hand up? Yeah, are, yeah. are the committee chairs going to review their work plan for this past year and make proposed changes so that everyone can look at them before the meeting? Yes, I, th right. I was going to suggest that for those of you who are committee chairs, go over what's been done in the year with and, and write, think back to the kind of our itemized to-do list and our deadlines, right? mark off what's been completed, what still needs to be done um, so we can project forward to the future. And if something is no longer feasible, if we've talked about doing changes to it throughout the year, highlight those so we can discuss that as the meeting at the work plan meeting as well. Yes, thank you, Pam. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. 
So committee chairs, you got a little bit of homework to do. Not a lot. Uh, hey, I'm going to take just noticing which which ones of these committees do not have leaders. Um, I'm going to do the recon survey and I'm going to do the cemetery one in terms of making proposals. Okay. Um, Pam, did you want to do OHAO? Pam, you're muted. No, it looks like a yes. <laughs> yes, it is a yes. I couldn't get my button to work. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, Regina, designation. That's. I would like to discuss designation as whether this is a category we want to, you know, what is the lifetime of this category? Is Does it work with what we're trying to accomplish now? I would like to have a big discussion about that one. Mm -hmm. Sustainability, Josh. Okay, I good. Think too, I, I mean, I know it's not on there currently, but grant program. I don't know yeah. what that would fall so, under if that needs that, to be a separate or that, that would be, I think I that think might be a new category. I yeah. think at this point in time, it's a new category. Um, and we, I mean, I know we're, we're only one, one meeting in. Yeah, but it's heading good. towards two, I guess. But we can talk about that at the meeting yeah. next week also. And I think it's not a bad idea that that subcommittee begin at least right now, putting forward some, preliminary goals for one year, three year, five year, mm -hmm. right? You want me to put just a brief list of stuff together? Yes. We, I, yeah, but I think we can talk about that next week at our meeting too. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can think about it and we can talk about it on okay. tu tu yeah. Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh -huh. uh, Thank you. I keep, Tuesday. I keep saying next week because I can't remember when it is because yeah. I have a meeting every day from here until next Friday. Uh -huh. So I just know it's next week at some point in time and my computer will remind me. So, <laughs> but yes, next Tuesday, we can uh, totally talk about that. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. I'll okay. say too, Sharon, this isn't related to old and new business, but this is the point in my notes where I realized that we have two section Roman numeral eights. I know. I have I'm going to just <laughs> reformat it. Chris, I'm using the same format that Chris put together. Probably well, I, I, know, I know it's because it's of the it's enough. because of the public hearing. That's where it got right. messed up because old and new business is normally eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Right. Okay, so, I have a question. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. What meeting do we have next Tuesday? A week from Tuesday. Two weeks from today. Uh, no, no, today you don't. You don't have a meeting next Tuesday. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's Josh, Josh and Regina and me and Pam and Catherine and Catherine. Ah, okay. Okay. Sorry. So, so you're sorry. good. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Um. Okay. Um. Anything else with the work plan? Okay, so again, it will be it will be streamed. Um, you know, we will be using the city Zoom. Um, I will at the beginning and some point in time towards the end take a moment to take public questions, but it will be an informal meeting. And I don't plan for purposes of transparency. I don't plan on voting on anything at the work plan meeting. We'll create the work plan, we'll carry it over to March's meeting, and then we will publicly vote on the work plan at our normal meeting, just for purposes of public transparency. Okay. Yep. Um, all right, um, our annual report, uh, the draft of the annual report is included in the packet. And that's gonna go, it has to be to the city clerk by March 1st. So if there are any corrections or anything that anybody sees to it, speak. I only through. saw one little thing. Okay. Page two oh. under inventory Kalamazoo 2022, COVID isn't capitalized, but it is capitalized everywhere else. Oh, okay. Oh, there's a, okay, so, so. What does the Chicago Manual of Style say about that? Well, I actually was thinking about that because I, I think it, it's capitalized. It and is, then I was is, like, but is everything is capitalized? And is there a dash? You know, yeah. And do I have to use 19 each time? Exactly. <laughs> I need to be consistent whatever I do. So, yes, I can, I can change that. That's easy. 
I found a couple of really small things as well. Oh, good. Let's see, the second paragraph um, under introduction, there needs to be a period at the end of the, the last sentence there, the annual preservation awards were postponed until 2021. Yep. Yep. Good. Um, and then another one, the same on the first page there still, um, second paragraph from the bottom, um, local historic districts, First Baptist Church to become a local historic district should not be plural. You're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then Got it. That's all Thank that you. I thought. Other than that, looks great. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. It becomes invisible to me after a while. I get. I get that. Yeah, I th I think it looks I think it looks good. Um, okay. Anybody have any questions or discussion on the annual report? Okay. Um, Sharon, yes, I need to call for a motion to approve the annual report. Is that correct? Am I remembering? Uh, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Um, I can cross T's. Okay. So at this point in time, I would like to call for a motion to approve the annual report as amended with the three corrections that were just put forward. I'll move to approve the report as amended. Is there a second? Kyle seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Excellent. So the motion passes. Uh, approval of meeting notes from last month. Mr. Chair? Yes, Pam. Old and new business underneath. Oh, uh, shoot. You know what? I added it in and I totally forgot. You were correct. Item C? Yep, yes. item C. The Kalamazoo Lost and Found. Thank you, Pam. Yes. <laughs> um, as you could tell from the sales report for last year, the income has continued to drop from the sales of Kalamazoo Lost and Found. And um, they are closely approaching the point where it's going to start costing you to pay someone to fulfill those orders rather than making a modest amount of income, which this last year was just under $300. Okay. At the same time, I need to give up my responsibilities for fulfillment because my poor old lady back just won't let me lug those boxes around anymore. And so I talked with Lynn who shared that responsibility with me when we first started making deliveries of the book and acting under contract to fulfill the orders. And she said she would be happy for a year with two caveats. Number one, that the Preservation Commission um, agree to make a decision about what's going to happen with the rest of the inventory by next September and to bring that decision to a conclusion by the end of the year. She has agreed, if you wish, to work at the same rate that I was working at, which is noted in the, the report. And um, there are some options for relieving ourselves of excess inventory or most of it. Um, I have talked with a couple of people. Um, there have been ideas floated, one of which was from Sharon just yesterday or the day before, which was to keep a certain amount of books in reserve as gifts for preservation award winners. But in reality, the book is 20 years old. And um, I, I'm very sorry to, to, to say this, but some of the buildings that were featured in the found section as still here aren't anymore. Mm -hmm. And that number is unfortunately growing. So without a revision, 
which I have no intention of taking on, but would be more than happy to support someone else in doing it. Um, I think it probably has started to, uh, uh, it's swiftly approaching the end of its uh, life as a fundraiser for the, the commission. Mm -hmm. So what we would like to have from you tonight is a decision to accept Lynn's offer, to pick up the fulfillment responsibility and to prepare a contract for her to do that for this year. After which I will transfer the record keeping processes and the inventory that I currently have in my garage to hers. Um, but we do have a lot of books sitting on pallets at the city records office. And um, each time I go to, to uh, refill my inventory from the, for the garage for, fill, for filling orders, they get more and more difficult to access because there are pallets being put over the top of them and pallets being put three deep around them and, and things like that. So there are a couple of obstacles. So we would like your approval to transfer those responsibilities and to accept um, Lynn's caveats, which are to make a decision by September and carry that decision out by the end of the year. Okay, if that was gonna be my big question. Tonight, all that you're asking is simply to transfer responsibility from you to Lynn. And we've got some time to figure out what is gonna happen with the, all right. On, right, and I have, I have started a list for you. Yep, yep. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with making that decision tonight. I was gonna say, I'm not comfortable tonight figuring out what we're gonna do with all the rest no, of the things, no. but yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Um, okay, so there is a call, there's a call for a motion on the floor to transfer responsibility of Kalamazoo Lost and Found from Pam O'Connor to Lynn Houghton, with the caveat as well that by September, we as a commission figure out what to do with the remaining inventory by September 1st, 2021. So that is the proposal on the floor is... Um, There's more to it than that, Josh. One, that, decision, that whatever decision you make by September needs to be brought to conclusion by the end of 2021. Right, right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that is the motion that is on the table. Is there a second? Well, I guess... You need to motion or someone else. I, I, need, I, need, to call, I need to call for a motion. Yeah. I'll motion. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Before I call for the vote, is it clear what everybody is voting on? Because I know that was that was just a lot. Is there any discussion or questions? Well, I have a question. <clears throat> yes, Lene. Can I get a copy of that book? Or what is? I'm sorry, I don't know what. It oh is. wow. <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm sure Pam will be happy to sell you one. It's one okay. we've got to worry about. All you have to all you have to do is say the word commission, and we are happy to make gifts. In the past, we have to new preservation commissioners and to new city commissioners. And, and new one who doesn't just, have one, commissioners. What? Who are you fulfilling the books to? We have several retailers in Kalamazoo that are selling it on our behalf. That and how the, often do you fulfill? As needed. When they have an order of eight books or more, they call and ask to have them delivered. And so whoever does the fulfillment, which has been me for the last 10 years at least, um, makes up a delivery notice for which we get a signature when we drop off the books. And then that goes to um, um, Sharon's department for billing to the retailer. So this is like Michigan News, Kazoo Books, um, you know. Parents Company has been a, a customer. Kazoo Books, uh, Spirit of Kalamazoo down in the mall. Nature Connection up until the time they closed at the end of the year. Um, and how, on average, how often do you get a call to fulfill? 
Well, I had, I think, a total of seven fulfillments last this past year. Seven in a year. It's not much. If how you, much is the how much is the book? How much does it sell for? The hardcover sells for thirty nine ninety five. The soft cover sells for. Let me look. Just a minute. Yeah, I can't. I, I never sell it at retail. Um, I was gonna say if it twenty six ninety five. It's sixteen seventeen. Wholesale. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, I didn't know what I was agreeing to, but okay, I got it. Um, if you, yeah, if I could get a copy, that would be great. Um, well, that needs to be a second a second motion because it's actually giving away something from which the commission normally earns income. So if the commission would like to provide all the new commissioners who don't already have a copy with a book, that's a that's a other action. We're going to deal with that separately. Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Because I, 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 would, I would love to give some to my historic district commissioners too as a thank you for um I, you know, I tell you what I tell you what then that's gonna be a discussion for well I, we got time we got time tonight we can I, I want to deal with this first vote first though. Oh Is, yes are there any other motion. questions or discussions about transferring responsibility from Pam to Lynn Houghton? deciding what we're going to do with this by September 1st, and then bringing that to conclusion by the end of the year. And, but the books stay in Pam's garage? No. So the books physically will be moved out and, and Lynn, no, 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 no. No, the books are, the book, or you're talking about the bookkeeping that will move yeah. from your house, Pam, to oh. Lynn? Yes, both. But the, physically, the books are stored on pallets at the city. No. Uh, the, the physical books are, are stored for the most part at the city records office. Yeah. And I keep a small inventory here so that if I get an order tomorrow that requires delivery the next day, I don't have to try to work my way into the city records office because they're not staffed all the time and open so that I can't just show up and get them. So I keep a couple of cases of hard covers and a couple of cases of soft covers here. And then I draw from the larger inventory as needed. Those well, would I go don't... to Lynn's house, as would the bookkeeping function for the sales and the reporting to you. Um, that's all been part of the fulfillment contract. Okay, all right. uh, that, that is what I think needed to be added, Josh that she's physically moving the boxes out of her garage and give it the, the ones that she has. The, the ones that she currently has. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's fine. We can, right. we can add that. All right. Is, is there a, a motion to approve the original motion as amended? Our motion to approve. Okay. As amended. Any other discussion? Okay, this needs to be a roll call vote. Fred? Yes. Kyle? Yes. Tim? Yes. Dina? Yes. Lene? Yes. Catherine? Yes. And me? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Josh, I'm glad you didn't make us repeat that motion. Right, <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's recorded. I mean, I'm trying the, to type it. That's, that's <laughs> nice to you about. Actually, it's right here in the report if you want yep. to look. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. You're right. Yep. Um, okay, so now discussion of do, and, and Sharon, you wanted to do the district commission too as well. Is that what you said? Oh, I, I'd love to be able to do that. When we start meeting in person again, I would love to be able to, you know, give it to them as a thank you for being on the commission, you know, and even past commissioners or something. I'd like to consider making a free copy available to anybody who has served on the preservation or district commission in the past 10 years that doesn't already have a copy. 
but they have to let us know if we decide we want to do something like that, they'd have to let us know before I retire and I could just keep them at my office and people could come and pick them up. We hope to be back in the office towards the end of April, mid-April, end of April. So I, I'd like to, I'd like to consider that as something, you know, one of the possible things. Okay. Would we have to vote on each? That was, no. that was my question. Yeah. Would we have to vote on each time that books would be transferred or would it be just a, <laughs> I, not that that would be a big deal. I'm just asking functionally, would we well, have to I, approve Can I make each? a suggestion? Yeah. I would suggest that you consider um, retaining as you think about what's going to happen over the long term, just to make a blanket statement that you're going to reserve, say, 200 copies. Yes. And those will live with Lynn. Yeah. And as they are called on, that way Sharon doesn't have to worry about taking care of them when she retires. They don't need to stay in her office. They would all be with Lynn. Lynn will be aware of it. And they may go to whomever the commission decides to give them to until they're gone. Yeah, that's a good idea because this is kind of part and parcel to the decision this body needs to make anyway of what's going to happen with all these and it needs to be terminated by the end of the year. Um, I, I don't know that we want to necessarily vote on this tonight mm -hmm. because this, this is a much larger question. And, and yeah, like Pam said, you know, keep 200, 250, 100, I mean, and what is going to happen with all the remaining books as, as well. I would, I would advise that, you know, each of us begin thinking about this right now and included in that thought process, then, you know, do we want to give commissioners of this body and the historic district commission copies as well, because that, feeds into what are we going to do with all these other copies anyway. So I would say that, you know, or I would ask you all to do some thinking about this. And in that, should new commissioners get books? And, you know, I'm fine with that as well, even though I didn't get a book, but I already had a book and I already had a copy, whatever. Um, Pam, you had your hand up. What that doesn't, though, do now is get Linnea book, who actually asked for one this evening. <laughs> no, well, I can wait. I can that wait. Is very correct. It does not get Linnea book tonight, but okay. it, it, it very well. I, you know, I, I don't know that I want to have a vote for just one. Per, well, okay, I'm going to call for a vote. <laughs> I was well. Linnea how many? How many I, I, current? We don't, I, we don't how, how many? How many current commissioners don't have a copy? Don't have a copy. That's question number one. So Kyle, Linnea. Fred, do you have a copy? Yeah. Okay, Tim, I'm, you probably have a copy, but Tim has a copy? Okay, I would like to call for a motion to get Lene and Kyle copies of Kalamazoo Lost and Found. You got to specify probably hardcover or softcover because there are two different ones. Hardcover. <laughs> hard, hard we cover. always give away hardcovers as gifts. I know, yeah. I'm just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hardcover. So I'm calling for a motion. I move that we give hardcover lost and found books to oh. Lene and Tim. Catherine, do you have one? I, I do have one, yeah, thank you. Okay, so there's there's a motion to to give hardcovers to Lene and Kyle. Is there a second? A uh, second. Okay, uh, since this is money, we actually have to roll call. Um, so, okay, um, Tim? Yes. Regina? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kyle? Four. Uh, Fred? Uh, yes. Lene? Yes. All right. I, I, Mr. Chair, I think that probably the two commissioners that would be receiving this gift should probably abstain from that vote. And that's actually a very good point. That's it's actually a very good point. It, I mean, it, it it passes, but but yes, that is a very good point. I also want to uh, make aware, and when I get a hold of the um, finances, um, that we'll have to subtract that as a cost. Uh, no, 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 no. But it was a donation. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. 
it's it's a product that is for sale and it's lost money. So I do, I think, okay, I think we should put it as a depreciation always. or something. Yeah. Those are always we, recorded, Lene. Yeah. yeah. So, and also when we think about the books, hundreds, 200, a thousand, whatever, that needs to be calculated as well at sixteen yes. fifty a piece. You know, we're talking like three thousand dollars, and so just just food for thought. That's all I'm yeah. putting out there. Right, yeah. Lene. The, this is this is not anything new. This this body has given copies to all of the new incoming city commissioners as gifts uh, in the past, and. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is this is nothing. This is nothing new. Um, governors. Yeah, governors. And well, and and previous commissioners on this mm -hmm. on this body as as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of those. Every book that hasn't been taken from the records office without my knowledge has been recorded. Yeah. On our inventory list. Yes. Before. Um, yeah, I was gonna say the the last incoming round of commissioners for the city received copies as well. Yeah, so um, no, I mean this is I, I was joking around. This is nothing that we haven't done in the past. We've, we've done this. I literally already had a copy when I when I came on. That's why I didn't get one. So when when I got engaged to my husband, one of the things that really attracted me was he's he's from the Kalamazoo area. But in his apartment in Saginaw, he had a copy of Lost and Found. So it's like, okay, you're on top of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, regarding regarding the larger idea of of what it should be done with these books, um, let's think about this and not not next month. But I would like to address this sooner rather than later. So probably not. March, but maybe May or June, I think we should, I, June's actually pushing it. I would like to, by May, I think, resolve this, if that's all right with y'all. So, okay, uh, coordinator's report. I don't even remember what I wrote. What did I write this time? Wait, did we approve the meeting minutes? No. The last meeting? Not yet. I don't, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. That's right. See, now I'm all off because I forgot about item C. All right, so approval of meeting minute notes from January. I don't remember seeing anything when I went through them, but surely could have missed something. I spotted one misspelling. <clears throat> So, and keep in mind, these are not like minutes yeah. because we don't have a staff person that does that. Um, these are just notes so we can keep track of when we did what. So they're not in depth as much as they would be if we had minutes. Probably we'll ask for someone for the person that replaces me so they don't have to worry about taking minutes or taking notes. I don't see anything that's that's off. Did anybody else, does anybody have any corrections? Okay, is there a motion to approve? I'll motion to approve with whatever spelling correction Sharon saw. Okay, is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now the coordinator report. Okay, I was very pleasantly surprised that the 
number of projects for the Historic District Commission had not fallen off as much as I expected from last year to this year. Although it's not shown by this because I've already moved to the 20, 2021, 2020. So that's a good thing. Um, I wanted to let you know that I have been in discussion with the with my boss, Christina, and that we're probably gonna post my job sometime in uh, the first half of April. So at that time, it's gonna get, I mean, I'm gonna send it everywhere I can on Facebook into organizations and hope that we get somebody very dynamic and interesting that can, uh, is either, someone from Kalamazoo would be spectacular, but if we can't get someone from Kalamazoo, just someone who wants to come and learn about Kalamazoo would be really good too. So, yep, that's all that's on my report. Anything more? I would just like to make a comment in that regard, if I may. Uh-huh. Yeah. Somebody who likes Sharon can actually keep up with everything you guys are doing. You don't know this, but when I did a survey last year of all of the other um, preservation commissions and local historic district commissions, in the state of Michigan, ours, yours, was the only one. Many were empowered with raising funds and doing education generally and other stuff. None of them were doing it. Yeah. None of them. Yeah, and I think I think that speaks to the fact that we have two commissions. So we have, because normally when you go through a historic district commission meeting or someone like Ypsilanti, where they have two meetings a month because they're so picky about paint colors and some other things, by the time you finish all that, you don't have the energy for the type of planning that we can do with a second commission type of projects that we can do. So this has been a, a really huge asset for Kalamazoo. And I'm glad we did not give in in 1974 when the city attorney said, why don't you just put them both under one? You know, let's not have two separate commissions. So I'm, I think this has worked out very well for us for preservation in our city, very nicely. Anything else, Sharon? Nothing more for me. Okay. Um, item J in the packet, um, just for, to, for all of us to look over, um, the character, character study, if I could talk, suggested readings. Um, please, everybody do take a look at those. Um, there's some really good stuff in there. So let's keep this in mind for discussion for coming up in a couple months. Um, any questions about anything related to that? I just, I just wanted to comment that um, we, Christina has heard from Andrews University. We have a student assigned for the light uh, for the light and shadow study, mm -hmm. who is very excited about it and has done similar, another project that was similar in another city. So for this, for this student, this is going to be an extension of something they've already begun. So they're very, very excited about it. I don't remember the name or the details, but it was, uh, it sounds like we're going to get some good interest about it. And in my office, when I unpacked it, one of the things I have, and I do not know where it came from, is a scale model of Bronson Park with cardboard, cardboard, models of all the buildings that surround the park okay. and I don't it, it just appeared when we moved last time and I said like, we can't get rid of this I have to figure out what to do with it but it's got it's like a it's like a little village you set out and it's got the the park laid out on a big piece of paper and then it's got the little cardboard buildings then the back side is missing for cool. all of them it's got the civic and everybody do you know where it came from no but I know where it should go where the Kalamazoo Valley Museum. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. All right, I've seen it. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah, okay. I've seen it. Okay. I think it, was, I think it was used for a charrette when they were having a bunch of young people that might be interested in architecture over at, um, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the firm, Bice. They had, it was a, this like big thing they were doing about how can you re-envision someplace and they were using it kind of as their, as their um, uh, gaming platform. It's not as detailed as you think it is in your head. It's just plain it's great. It's very cardboard. simple blocks and squares. Like they've got the towers and they've got the, you know, 
but it's just it, it could be a fun project for someone to take over and make it fancy too you know or maybe for the people who play um oh what's dungeons the game? and dragons no no the one oh. <laughs> the one on your, on your on your phone with the little creatures i have no clue what you're talking about but dungeons we're gonna and dragons we're gonna no. move on <laughs> We're going to move on. Um, go. Citizen comments on non-agenda items. Oh, wait, I had one more question about the light and shade study. What's the timeline? Uh, probably be done by the end of this semester. So we're talking about early April. Early April. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Now citizen comments on non-agenda items. There are no comments at this time. All right. Excellent. Yay. Uh, commissioner comments. Okay, um, I'll call for somebody to move to adjourn. I move to adjourn. There we go. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See, two, see everybody in two weeks. Thank you. I'll see, see you, you on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>